Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, Miss Martins, and today we're going to continue with chemical bonding. We're going to be focusing on covalent bonding. In the last lesson, we introduced chemical bonding and we looked at the three different types. If you missed that lesson, I'm going to link it over here so you want to watch that one first. But today, we're going to focus on covalent bonding, which we defined as the sharing of electrons between atoms to form molecules or compounds. It's very important to take note that covalent bonding takes place between a non-metal and a non-metal. Now, how do I know which atoms are metals or non-metals? Remember, there's a dividing line on the periodic table that separates metals, which can be seen over here on this side of the periodic table, with non-metals, which can be seen on this side of the periodic table. Just remember that little hydrogen over here is actually a non-metal. If you get the Lewis dot diagrams of different molecules or compounds, the quickest way to see if it's representing a covalent bond or an ionic bond is with the absence or the presence of brackets. So what I mean by that is you can see here in covalent bonding, this is water, the hydrogen and the oxygen are bonded covalently, which means they share electrons. You do not see brackets there. You do not see charges there. Over here, ionic bonds, you can see brackets, we can see charges. This is different. This is ionic bonding. We'll get to ionic bonding in another video. If you want to see it, just let me know down below. But that's just a quick visual way to tell the difference between a Lewis dot diagram that is representing covalent bonding versus a Lewis dot diagram that is representing ionic bonding. I keep going on about Lewis dot diagrams, but what the heck are those? Basically, Lewis dot diagrams are a visual representation of how atoms bond with one another. It shows how they share electrons if they have a covalent bond or how electrons are transferred if we are talking about an ionic bond. And Lewis dot diagrams always works with the valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons found in the outer energy levels of an atom. A very quick way to tell the number of valence electrons that an atom has, if you look at your periodic table, is to look at the Roman group numerals that is located here on your periodic table. So for example, you can see here to my right, boron has three valence electrons. Remember, we can also look at an Aufbau diagram in order to tell how many valence electrons an atom has. So if you draw the Aufbau diagram for oxygen, Again, if you don't know how to do this, or if you're looking for a recap on Aufbau diagrams, I'll link my video on Aufbau diagrams over here. We will see that the outer energy level, which is energy level two, is not full. Energy level two has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. Because these are the electrons in the outer energy level, we also call them valence electrons. And those are the electrons that are going to be involved in bonding. So it's the valence electrons that we draw in our Lewis dot diagrams. So if I ask you to draw the Lewis dot diagrams for the following elements, so not compounds, just elements, this is how it works. For oxygen, what we'll do is we'll either use an alpha diagram or we'll look at our periodic table in order to see that oxygen has six valence electrons. We draw six dots or six crosses around oxygen. We draw one on each side. So what I mean by that is we go one, two, three, four, and we start at the top again, five and six. In total, an atom has space for eight, okay? Which means that oxygen has an open space over here and an open space over here. It needs eight electrons in its outer orbital, in its outer energy level in order to be full, but it doesn't have eight it only has six. So if I want to do sodium, we look at sodium on the periodic table. Sodium is in group one, it's over here. We know that that means that it has one valence electron. It'll have one dot or cross. It doesn't matter where you draw it. I'm just gonna do it on the right-hand side. So one dot or one cross. Let's look at chlorine. Chlorine is over here. And as we can see, chlorine has seven valence electrons. Let's use dots this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, it has space for eight. So here's an open little gap over here, but chlorine only has seven. The reason they share their electrons is to be stable. They want to reach that noble gas structure. They want to be stable. And this is very important. You need to know this. Hydrogen needs two in total to be full or stable. Hydrogen and helium. They only have a 1s orbital, so then they need two electrons in total to be full or stable. 
everything else needs eight. So if I ask you to draw a Lewis dot diagram for the hydrogen molecule or H2 or hydrogen gas, this is how you do it. You first decide whether it is an ionic or a covalent bond. It's very obvious that it is a covalent bond because hydrogen is a non-metal. So a hydrogen and a hydrogen will be two non-metals. Then what we do is we think about the valence electrons that each hydrogen atom has. So one, this hydrogen atom has one electron. This hydrogen atom has one electron. Because I have two hydrogen atoms, I'm going to use an X to represent the electron in the first hydrogen atom and a dot to represent the one valence electron in the second. Then we think about the following. We said hydrogen needs two in order to be full. Each hydrogen only has one. So what they do is these hydrogen atoms share those electrons with each other. So we add these together and my final compound, you draw them closer to each other and you draw the shared electrons in the middle. Now each hydrogen has two electrons. So this hydrogen on the left has two electrons. This hydrogen on the right has two electrons. And remember, hydrogen only needs two to be stable to fill its outer energy levels. So that is a single bond because they share one pair of electrons. This is why hydrogen is diatomic. If we look at chlorine or the chlorine molecule, Cl2, again, we know that this is covalent bonding because chlorine is a non-metal. So we have a chlorine atom with a chlorine atom two non-metals. Each chlorine, look at the number of valence electrons, each chlorine has seven valence electrons. So it has space for one more. Remember, it needs eight to be stable. The second chlorine molecule also has seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, another space. It needs one more electron to be full. So think about it. They each have seven. They each need one more to be full. So these electrons over here, these two over here, can be shared with one another. Green electrons that are highlighted, they're going to pull to the middle because they're going to be shared. And then you just fill in the other electrons as normal. This pair of electrons over here, you see it's a pair, which means it's a single bond. If they share one pair of electrons, they form a single bond. And again, here's a little quick summary of the chlorine molecule. Look at HCl or hydrochloric acid. We know that it is a covalent bond because hydrogen is a non-metal. I know it's on the left-hand side of the periodic table, but remember, hydrogen is an exception. It's a non-metal. And chlorine is also a non-metal. Hydrogen has one valence electron. You can see there by the Roman group numeral. Chlorine has seven. Think about it. Hydrogen needs two to be stable. Chlorine needs eight. So hydrogen needs one more. Chlorine needs one more. Then they think, oh cool, we can just share these with each other. So you draw them closer to each other and then the things that they share, they go to the middle and that becomes the shared pair of electrons. So here you can see one pair of electrons is shared, single bond. Here is a nice summary for you to understand. The and then finally, let's do H2O or water. Again, it's covalent because hydrogen and oxygen are non-metal, so non-metal and a non-metal. If you think about this compound now, we've got one oxygen and two hydrogens. So this hydrogen has one valence electron. The second hydrogen also has one valence electron plus our oxygen atom. Let's look at oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons. Now remember, hydrogen needs two to be stable. So it has six. It needs two more. It needs two more. And isn't it just perfect? Because it needs two more. It can share this one with that hydrogen and this one with that hydrogen. And think about it, that will also make the hydrogens full and stable. So I'm going to draw the final molecule, molecule here. Oxygen will go in the middle. And it makes sense because oxygen needs to share with this hydrogen and this hydrogen. So I'm going to fill in everything else as is with oxygen, just like I had it initially. Now you see over here, I have an open space. That's where the first hydrogen is going to come closer and share that electron. In this open space, 
the other hydrogen is going to come closer and share that electron. Now, if you had to count the number of electrons around oxygen, you'll get eight, and each hydrogen has two. It's basically like this. A single bond over there and a single bond over there. How do I know it's two single bonds? Because this is a single pair of electrons that's shared over there, which creates a single bond, and a single pair of electrons that is shared over there that creates a single bond. These two electrons here, that is called a lone pair. And we have another two electrons over there, which is another lone pair. Another summary for you. And if you would like to see me do double bonds and triple bonds, please give this video a thumbs up so that I know you want to see more and comment down below. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel so that I know you want to see more of this content. 